You know what they say, nothing goes better with chocolate than chocolate. Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome into my kitchen. If you're new here, Liz is me and you can call me Liz and today I'll show you how I make chocolate fudge frosting. For all your ingredients and measurements, don't forget to check out the description. Start by adding half of your cream, your butter and your chocolate to a pan. Add a pinch of salt and your remaining cream. Then on a low heat, we just want to melt the chocolate. This is similar to making a ganache, but not quite. Add some instant coffee, keep the temperature low and keep stirring so nothing sticks to the bottom. And don't forget to scrape your edges. Once the chocolate and the butter are melted, you can add the cocoa and the icing sugar. It's important to sift them to make sure they go in nice and smooth and you don't have any lumps. You can turn off the heat and stir everything in. Turning off the heat allows you better control of your texture. And you can adjust the thickness of your frosting by adding more or less icing sugar. Once it's all combined, it's time to add your vanilla. Adding things like vanilla and the coffee bring out a different depth to the flavour of the chocolate. You can add one or both or neither, it's actually completely up to you. Next, we're gonna transfer everything into a heat-proof bowl, add some cling wrap to the top, and you're going to press the cling wrap down onto the surface of the frosting. By doing it this way, you're going to prevent the frosting from developing a skin as it cools. And to make sure it's completely ready and cool, I'm gonna leave this in the fridge overnight. Through the magic of TV, it should look like this. After a quick stir, it's ready to use. While it's thick like this, it's perfect for brownies or cupcakes. But today I'm going to whip it slightly because it makes it soft enough to work with on a cake. I'm making a four layer mud cake for my friend's birthday. To find out how I made the mud cake, check the link to see that episode. The cake was also chilling in the fridge overnight. Working with the chilled cake allows the frosting or the buttercream to set while you're decorating. This is going to be a surprise cake so I need to cut out the middle using a cookie cutter. By adding a little bit of frosting to the bottom of the cake, it'll stick to the board a lot better. You can pipe this on, but I find this is much faster and just as efficient. And less tools means less to clean up. If you're enjoying the video so far, give me a like so YouTube will share the video with more people. When adding buttercream or frosting to a layer cake, it's important you get the right balance of cake to frosting. In this case, I've got one and a half inch slices of layer cake, four layers, and about an inch of frosting between each layer. And to make sure that the cake is level all the way around, if you have extra areas of gap between the layers, just add a little bit more frosting. I don't sell cakes, I make cakes with love. And I make cakes for family. This is a birthday cake for a four year old, and I was told chocolate. So I've gone all in on all the chocolate. This is going to have some nice decorations on top and a slight crumb coat around the edges. A crumb coat is when the outer edges are kind of scraped up against the edge of the cake so it's a semi-naked cake and you can see some of the layers going through and it picks up any extra crumbs coming off the cake. Fill in the gaps as you need to and then make sure everything's level. And an extra little swirl on top as a final touch. Did someone say more chocolate? As a little something extra, I'm adding some chocolate sprinkles to the base of the cake. This part can get quite messy if you're not careful, so take your time. Just one thing missing. Take the last little bit of frosting, soften it in the microwave for about 10 seconds, and we're going to add it to a piping bag. You can pour it straight into the piping bag if you want to, but this makes it a lot easier to work with and a lot less messy. Roll it into a chocolate sausage. Select your piping tip and add it all together. Before doing the piping, I gave the cake an hour in the fridge and I'm giving it a nice little border. When it comes to piping, practice makes perfect. And if you make a mistake, you can just take it off and try again. One more in the middle. And we're all dressed up for the party. No matter how old you are, everyone deserves the perfect birthday cake. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see some more of my secret recipes, let me know in the comment section what you'd like me to show you. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the kitchen. Thanks,